Okay, okay, okay. Um, well, welcome to day number 23. I, I, uh, I can't believe I've been doing this for 23 days. Well, not live streaming, but making the art. Um, and I have been live streaming every weekday. Um, if you tuned in yesterday, my uh, I apologize. My energy level was just really low. And um, I was kind of feeling a little bit that way today. And then it's kind of back up now. So... Um, I'm, I'm ready to go. I'm raring to go. Um, and you know, 20, 20 some days of doing this and it's given me, it's given me some insight into like my own art making and, uh, my ideas behind what, what I'm doing. And, um, it's really kind of in ways it's kind of muddling things because there's lots of ideas that, that have been coming up and I've been trying lots of different things, but also it's been, I'm kind of, um, I've been kind of figuring some things out. So uh, now I'm going to talk about that in a moment. But um, as always, if you're tuning in and you want to pop into the comments and say hi, I really appreciate that. It's always great to see who's out there and where everyone's tuning in from. So um, anyway, like I said, I, I, I've been trying to figure out some things, trying to uh, reflect on the work that I've been making. And actually, it's it's really interesting to take a look at the work um, on social media. Um, so I, I, after I'm done making the piece, I, I try to photograph it and, and pop it up on Instagram and then that goes into my Facebook page. So that way you can kind of see the finished piece a little bit better. But um, what's really interesting is to look in Instagram and look at the feed, like where all the pictures are together because there are all these like little, little snippets, these little squares of images and it, it you know, it basically greatly reduces the size of the image. And um, that's a really kind of interesting thing to do is to kind of look at your artwork uh, from a distance. And sometimes when we're so close to our work and, you know, even in this case, it's like it's real small, um, but trying to get some kind of distance. And one way we could do that is through digital devices. So, you know, taking a photograph of your of your work and looking at it on your phone where it's kind of small actually is a good way to kind of get an overview, a good sense of, of the work. So I, I've been kind of looking at that and really noticing some things. So here over the last week or so, circles have really been big in the work. And, um, you know, I've always used geometric shapes, but really the circle has become pretty dominant over the last week or so. And that wasn't intentional, but over, I think, the last couple of days it, it has been. So... Um, I think part of, I mean, part of all this is, has been a, in a journey. And I use that word because I, I feel like that's what my artwork's about. It's about this journey. And I mentioned, I think maybe last week that, you know, it was this kind of journey to self-discovery. And, and I think by making art every day is kind of this journey of self-discovery. But I kind of feel like there's a little bit more to it. I'm still trying to figure that part out. But um it's it's been really interesting to go on this journey every day to make this little piece of art to really kind of sit back now and reflect so at the beginning of the month i was really working intuitively i still am to some degree but um trying to reflect more and kind of figure out like like what am i doing and and, and where am i going with it so um yeah so you know that's one of the reasons i've been using a lot of the mapping is because of this notion of the journey and I might go into it a little bit more um, maybe later in the month or whatever, but I only have a week left. I can't believe that. So only seven days after today. So um, anyway, before I, I pop in and, and do my work, I just want to check, see. So just kind of looking at uh, who's showing up today. So again, if you're tuning in and you want to pop into the comments and say hi, it's always great to see uh, who is here joining us today. So... Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and switch over to my overhead view and go ahead and start making. So um, so this idea of the circle, this idea of journeying has really become important. Uh, so I, I think I want, uh, I just realized I kind of cleaned up my space a little bit and not all my stuff is out. So I need to grab a paintbrush. Um, I realize I haven't used blue in a while, so I'm just going to grab a little bit of blue and paint that down. Just trying to get 
something going. Like I, I, I do a lot. Mm, why not throw in a little bit of purple? So sometimes I use just a single color to get something going. Sometimes I mix. I think before this dries, I'm going to take, rinse out my brush and just with plain water, I'm going to uh, flick some wa water on it. And what that does, it kind of creates a speckle. I, I, you might not be able to see it in the video, um, but it, the splattering water just sort of pushes some of that paint out and kind of creates a bit of a texture. So let's go ahead and hit that with the hair dryer. dive into my ink tense pencils and get out this is called sea blue it's a, one of my favorite blues of course you can see it, how small it is <clears throat> so I think I just I'm gonna use some of these Ran, more random kind of organic lines and you know these kind of started out as mapping marks and then have uh, morphed into this organic form that a lot of folks describe as being tree-like and I kind of came to a, uh, a a thought yesterday that I see it more as as like almost like a rock formation and uh, and not so much as a tree but it has that kind of tree like quality with like a a trunk and you know where i see this is like the roof of a cave or the you know a roof or ceiling of rock some people see that as the tree branching out and i just think you know we humans like to you know uh, uh identify patterns and so oh that looks like a tree but I like that form, that kind of branching out form, especially going up, um, having it thinner at the bottom, like a trunk, just, I just kind of like that. And then having the negative space, I really like that. So I just wanted to put that in early today and see what becomes of it. But like I said, I think I think it really kind of came out about because of this notion of having the mapping marks and that, um, you know, this idea that each line is somebody's journey and that a lot of times we, we end up journeying with, with people. And so we kind of are following similar paths and then, at some point, some are those paths might part. So it's kind of interesting to think of it that way, and then, you know, it becomes this other kind of form. Now, using the blue on it, I don't get that rock kind of feeling, but I get more of a of a water kind of feeling. So kind of almost like a a water spout or something. I don't know. We'll see where it goes today.
I'm going to use that exact same pencil, that sea blue ink tense pencil, and I'm going to put in some of my squares. So I've gotten into this thing where I like to do like, sometimes it varies, but a lot of times it's just like three squares on this side. And this will help to kind of balance out because there's this big negative space. My dogs must hear somebody outside or there's a delivery or something. <laughs> I do that sometimes where I'll use the exact same color and layer on top uh, using the ink tense pencil. And it just kind of creates a bit more value around. time my dogs bark I just kind of have to chuckle you know, it's just the uh, the um, kind of the epitome of of working from home of how many people have, have been working from home or teaching from home if you're, if you're a teacher and you know only to be interrupted by pets and things like that to some of my security envelopes. Again, security envelopes are just a great source of pattern paper.
So if you're just tuning in and you'd like to pop into the comments and let us know where you're tuning in from, that's awesome. If not, that's fine too. And remember, if you have any questions or comments, I do try to respond. If I can respond live, I will. If I can re uh, have to respond by typing up a response later, I'll do that too. I try to do both if I can. So these are some ideas that I've been playing with. You know, I've been using the three squares, the stripes of the um, security envelope. And now I'm just thinking about combining them with that organic form that's kind of getting a little bit hidden now, but I'm going to bring it back out in a little bit. Right, before I do anything else, I'm going to hit the collage with the uh, hair dryer again. This just kind of helps the glue stick dry, makes it bond a little bit better. Just kind of look into the comments and I see that Joanne mentions that uh, she's from Wilmington, North Carolina and that Crystal, Crystal Neubauer, she's been doing a daily live stream uh, with collage. I've been, actually I mentioned Crystal the other day because I have, I finally got a chance to start um, doing her class, Discovering Your Intuitive Voice. So it's just kind of funny. Anyway. Um, all right, so, oh yeah, I was going to take this, and this is the same sea blue, but what I'm going to do is I want to push this collage down. So just kind of looking back over the comments, it seems that we've got some new viewers today. So I just kind of want to mention that, you know, I'm just coming live every weekday and uh, just sitting down for an hour making art and there's really nothing involved. I'm not giving directions for people to follow along. It's just, I share my thoughts as I, as I'm working. And then, um, if people want to make art along with me, awesome. If they want to kind of follow along and, and use what I'm doing as inspiration, that's great. Or I know that there's um, at least one person says that she tunes in and just she stitches. So I find that that's really awesome too. So it's just kind of 
just sort of this I'm doing this for myself just to kind of this has given me um, the accountability to show up and make art every day and so that's kind of why I'm uh, why I've been doing it but I really do hope that people are getting something out of it A little piece of map. So, yesterday, even though I was not in really wasn't in the mood to make art um having that account accountability of showing up and making art really really helped um and i ended up doing something that was very different than what i typically do and it, it even though i used a lot of the same stuff to me it just felt very different and i but i really liked it and so one of the things that i liked was this combination of using the circle and this organic form. And so as I was thinking about today, I thought, well, maybe I could do that again. So what I'm finding is after 20, 22 days now, this is the 23rd day that my ideas are I think coalescing and I've kind of gone away from more representational so the first probably week or so I was I was using uh, photos and using um, drawn kind of profiles and such and I haven't done that so kind of going a bit more abstract but some things like this this tree-like image this organic image has kept coming up um, the use of circles keeps coming up so I think so I'm really just kind of thinking about like got that organic form got the circle so I'm thinking about that's gonna go like that but maybe not quite yet I think I'm gonna go in my bag and pull out another blue this is deep indigo so a real dark blue um, so I'm going to come in to this form I'm, I'm not trying to trace all the lines um, I, I kind of trace some of them and then others I, I add new ones especially up here near the top so this dark blue is just going to just do exactly what you think it's going to bring in some dark values
careful, blew my paper away. It's a problem, it curls and then it gets caught. And I almost blew my little circle away too. So one of the things I'm thinking about with this circle is something called the rule of thirds. And just if I divided my square into thirds, both vertically and horizontally, that this circle would kind of fall right at one of those intersections. And so that's just a easy way of thinking about a focal point is that if it falls at one of those intersections, it's just, it's a bit, um, just seems more, uh, uh, visually interesting. Sorry, just <laughs> couldn't think of the word. So I really want to make this circle pop out even more. I mean, it, it because there's a lot of white and now contrasts pretty much everything else because everything else kind of has some value on it. But I want to really make it stand out. I was thinking about using that deep indigo again, but I think I'm going to change it up and use use the violet, the purple. before I do that just feel like there's a bunch of purple there I want to have a little bit more
So like I've done um, a couple other times, I'm going to use some yellow paint here and paint in the circle. So that yellow and purple are really going to contrast each other. And just really, that yellow is going to really pop out. And I think to balance it out a little bit, I'm going to also put it in the squares over here. I think it's time to bring some ink into this. So I've got my nice thick uh, Faber-Castell Pit Artist pen. So those black lines really help pop those shapes out. I'm going to add more black, but first I'm going to go in. I've got this blue uh, thin pen. And I'm going to go in and work into that form. This is just helping me bring a little bit of definition to this organic form.
actually don't want that thick one. So now I'm going to take a black, thinner black pen. Just make this form a little bit more solid. Okay, liking that. I think I want to use, I need a little bit of something else. I'm going to add a little bit of red. And these are just some of the mapping marks that I like to do, things that look like streets in a map. So something I've been using a lot lately are the colored pencils. Nice thing is this is made by Derwent, the same folks that make the um, the ink tense pencils. Even though it's not the exact same colors, like they do have this is an indigo that I want to use, which again this is just a dark blue.
but really any any kind of set of uh, colored pencils would work. So a lot of times with the colored pencils, it's a it's very subtle because I'm not I'm not trying to really change it much. It's really just reinforcing what's there, maybe making things a bit neater on this organic form. It's it's about maybe going back and adding a little bit of shading to make things look a little bit more solid and a little bit more three dimensional. So this is the the stage that I, I refer to as embellishing. You know, it's like I'm I'm near the end. I don't want to drastically change it because I'm I feel like I, I like the composition, but I can heighten the contrast. I can create, like I said, some of that three dimensional feeling. One thing it can let me do is make uh, make it a little bit darker near the edges on this organic form. So in the one I did yesterday, I, I darkened the background, the negative space, to make that organic uh, form pop out. But because this background is lighter, if I go darker in the organic form, that's going to make it pop out. I'm always amazed at how quickly this hour goes by. I just glanced at the clock and I was like, oh, it's like 4.50. Well, I have about 10 minutes left. I mean, I could go more than an hour, but I really am trying to stick to that hour time frame. But just, you know, you get into that creative flow and you, you lose track of time and it just just kind of slips away then it's like oh I've been at this for that long wow so again it's I mean it, you might not even be able to kind of tell what's happening with the pencil because it's it's pretty subtle at this point 
but it's enough for me to kind of be like, okay, yeah, I can see something going on. I, you know, I'm making a little bit bluer right now, kind of getting getting some of those medium values. And then the white just lightens it up a little bit. I mean, it doesn't completely cover what's underneath, but it's a great way just to bring a little bit of contrast, a little bit of highlight. Again, I'm kind of it's kind of subtle, but. It just sort of adds to it. Okay. All right, I think I'm going to call this done. I do want to show you one more thing after I sign it. Okay. So the last thing I want to show you is that you've probably noticed that it curls, the paper curls. So this is 140 pound paper, I think. Um, yeah, 140 pound mixed media paper. So it's 300 grams per square meter, which it's a nice heavy duty mixed media paper, but it still will curl. And that's because of the water and using the hair dryer actually accentuates the curl. If I let it dry naturally, it wouldn't curl as much. Um, so what it is, it's really the, the fibers expand when you get them wet and then when they dry, especially when they dry really quickly with the, under the hair dryer, it shrinks. And so what happens is the fibers are shrinking and it just causes the paper to curl. Um, <clears throat> there are a couple ways you can deal with it. You can put it underneath a book, you know, heavy book and weights and stuff and flatten it. Some people iron it. Um, I try not to iron because the the um the materials can be affected by heat so colored pencils have wax in them might be affected sometimes i use photocopies photocopies are um, heat sensitive so i can actually cause some problems with an iron um, but if i turn it over and take a big paintbrush and some water so what i'm doing is just going to paint the back with water so I, i'm kind of going to kind of reverse the uh, shrinking process. I'm going to paint the uh, underside. So <clears throat> what happens is that the paper, you know, it does, this water doesn't soak all the way through. It just sort of like gets the top layer of paper fibers wet. So all the ones underneath ha haven't been affected by the water and the heat. So by turning it over, I'm basically uh, making all the fibers on the back wet. <clears throat> And then whenever I um, dry it, it's going to kind of curl back the other way, at least kind of lessen the curl. Now you can see it, it's actually curling more because what's happening is all the fibers on the back now are expanding. And so it, it just makes the curl even worse. However, I'll take my hair dryer. And sometimes I find just kind of like pressing it down a little bit too as I'm doing this. So you can see that it is much flatter now. It still curls up a little bit, and then I can always kind of bend, um, but it's much flatter now. So just a, just a little tip if you're like, oh, I really hate the way um, it curls and, and I want to be able to fix it a little bit. So um, anyway, so that's day number 23.
three. Um, again, you know, it's just that I've been really thinking about why, like, what's the message now? So I was working very intuitively at the beginning of the month, just trying some things out, seeing what kept coming back. And I find that, you know, we have to pay attention to things that, that keep coming back. So the things that we're drawn to and we're like, oh, I'm not sure why I'm using circles or I'm not sure what the, the those marks are about. Those are the things though. if we keep coming back to them over and over again, that's what we want to pay attention to because there's something there. There's a reason that it's drawing us in. And sometimes as an artist, we don't know why at first. So for me, that's why art's such a, a, a process of discovery is that oh, there's something about this that is speaking to me. And it, it goes back to that intuitive sense is that it is intuitively speaking to me. I use this intuitively now. Why? What does this mean to me? And so this process of showing up every day, for me at least, has been one of trying to discover kind of um, why I'm doing these things. And and to be honest, it's like I felt, I've felt very stagnant in my art making over the last few years and I felt like yeah I was making a lot of things but I really felt like things weren't meaningful I would look at stuff and just kind of like yeah that's not really what I want to be doing I, but I didn't know what and I kind of feel like now I'm, I'm getting back to that point where it's like oh I know what I want to make and and how I want to make it and not that I have it envisioned in my head but I have certain ideas that now are Kind of gelling for me so um i know for me this is i mean i'm doing this totally for myself i mean i'm being kind of selfish about this this is just for me to show up every day to make art it's one of the reasons why i live stream but at the same time i do want folks to be able to get something out of it themselves so hopefully you've been um able to get something out of it whether it's learning a, a few new techniques or kind of listening to me talk about my choices because um, I don't think we we see that a lot where artists kind of talk through their process. You know, they show techniques and they show, well, this is how I made this. But they, they might not talk all about their decision making and why they do certain things and what they're trying to do. And um, so hopefully it's kind of giving you a little bit of insight, at least into the way I make art. So um, anyway, I'll, I'll be back tomorrow and Friday and I'll be, be, be here next week. Uh, probably won't live stream over the, the weekend on um, Saturday. I'm teaching an online class. I'm doing image transfer. So if that's something you're interested in, make sure you check that out. Uh, it's a four hour workshop. It's going to be through Zoom. Um, yeah. And so uh, anyway, I will see you back here tomorrow. Actually, before I go, let me check, make sure. All right. Um, yeah. So if you have any questions, any comments, any concerns, post them in the comments and um, I will try to respond to them. So uh, anyway, I hope you have a great day and uh, we'll see some of you hopefully tomorrow.